This was the first state capital of Illinois, which is best remembered not for its founders, but for a certain political newcomer. Today, visitors tour the old state house to walk on the very floor that Abraham Lincoln trod and see the room where he was first enrolled as an attorney. Hi, I'm Jim Wilhelm. Behind me is the third and last building where the state legislature met in Vandalia. But it's not the only place in Vandalia which is of historical importance. In 1823, four years after becoming the capital, there was still no church building in town. So the General Assembly donated five city lots, four of which were to be sold with the proceeds used to construct a building on the fifth lot. That one room frame building was known as a house of divine worship and was made available to any denomination. It was also a general meeting place for the town population and it was also a school as the population grew. Eventually the house of divine worship moved and on the same lot was built the first Presbyterian church. When that congregation moved, the building then became home to the collected artifacts of the Fayette County Museum. More than just a bunch of antique items on display, this museum is really a warehouse of stories that give visitors a glimpse of Fayette County's past life. Here's an example. This secretary belonged to J.J. Brown, who was born in 1852 in New York. Brown lost both of his parents at an early age and was placed in an orphanage. Back in those days when an orphanage became full, space was provided by sending the children out west to serve as indentured servants. But Brown's auspicious beginning belied his later accomplishments. He became a teacher and a principal. He studied law and became an attorney and then a judge. Later he ran for the state legislature and in 1912 ran for governor. Not bad for a poor orphan boy. In the business sections are items from the Johnson Stevens Schinkel Shoe Factory, located here in Vandalia. That company was best known during the 1940s for its very fashionable women's rhythm step shoe line, which, by the way, are quite collectible today. Over here is a bedspread that was presented as a wedding gift in 1843. It was embroidered by a process known as candle wicking. That's because the linen threads used are of the same type employed in the making of candle wicks. Welcome back to the Fayette County Museum in Vandalia, which has on display this fro. What is a fro, you ask? Well, a fro is a tool used to cleave wood to make shingles. We're told that this one belonged to an employee of Mr. Paul Beck, who was a contractor who lived in the New Salem area. Scratched into the tool are the initials of that worker, A.L., who was Abraham Lincoln. According to family legend, Lincoln gave it to Beck when he quit in 1834 after he had been elected to the state legislature. It remained in the Beck family for five generations until they decided to share the fro with the world. So they donated it to this museum here in Vandalia, the town to which Lincoln came to serve in the legislature. Another Lincoln item on display is this Civil War document signed by the president. It's from the U.S. Volunteer Service with the President's thanks and a certificate of honorable service. Prior to the Civil War, because of its northbound trains, Vandalia was a stop on the Underground Railroad. A few years ago, a bag was left anonymously on the doorstep of the museum containing items from that period. Inside, officials discovered these two brass neck collars. Both were engraved with the owner's name J.W. Gosley, his address, Anchorage, Kentucky, and the names of the slaves. This one was Bell's neck collar. Subsequent research has revealed that the Gosley family did own a sizable plantation there in Kentucky, and that they did own a large number of slaves. So as we've seen, the Fayette County Museum is more than just a repository for antique items but a collection of stories preserved for future generations to learn from. Oh, and uh, one more story before we leave the museum. Next door is a vacant lot. It was the location of Robert McLaughlin's house. During his lifetime, he was a state treasurer, state senator, and a registrar for the U.S. Land Office. He was married to the niece of Shadrach Bond. And who was Shadrach Bond? He was the first governor of Illinois and he stayed with his niece on this site when the legislature was in session. 
In fact, as long as the legislature met in Vandalia, all the governors took rooms at the McLaughlin House. Today, Vandalia has several sites for visitors to explore. There's the Old State House, the Fayette County Museum, and the National Road Interpretive Center. For more information about these sites and their hours of operation, contact the Vandalia Tourism Office at 618-283-2728 or go to their website at www.vandaliaillinois.com.